<clears throat> they typically want to see you actually expend all your budget before you submit the supplemental request, and that's not been done yet in, in the current fiscal year. And then that actually takes us several months to get that money back. It takes a while. I, I don't know exactly how long this hatch review. I, I don't know. But I know typically <clears throat> the supplement's done in January, January, yeah. February. See, the, 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 the point is, you know, and we're at the bottom of the food chain. I understand that. But we, we are being impacted by the delays in receiving monies from the state and the federal government. So I would just like us to make sure we make a statement through our local representatives that, that they understand the situation so they'll be aware of it. So if we see them, they can't say, oh, I didn't know that was the case. I would just like to formally make that statement. And um, there was one more, but I will, uh, I'll discuss that with you later. Thank you. I would, in, in following up with Mr. Thomas, I would encourage any board member that can make it on February the 9th, that is an opportunity uh, for you to, to talk with your elected officials on the state level to certainly express your concerns and let them know how you feel. Now, at this point, as far as I know, I'm the only one that's, that's uh, registered to, to go to that uh, meeting. But if anybody else can go, I would certainly urge you to do it, and we'll make an appointment with each of our representatives in, in Caroline uh, to have time to discuss these issues. Because I think it's this issue, as well as many other issues, that the state has been pushing down to local governments uh, that is creating that has created this problem, not only for Caroline County, but for all counties without the state of Virginia. Uh, yeah, CSA is one of them. Uh, but there are a lot of other programs out there that they'll just keep pushing down to our level that's creating, that's really creating havoc uh, with local governments and, and their budget. So if you can make it, I would uh, certainly encourage you and uh, welcome uh, your help in trying to convince these guys. Okay? I'm out of time. Yeah, I'm out of time. Right. Ms. Hatcher, my, again, <clears throat> I know that you say your uh, sheets differ than uh, Mrs. Kearns, and, and I understand that to some, some degree. But explain to me why, how you can say yours are down and Mrs. Kern says hers is up on real estate uh, tax revenue collections. Because Mrs. Kern is looking at her actual numbers and I'm looking at what we have budgeted and those numbers tend to be a little different. She has her actual bills number. I don't budget the actual bills number. But you do agree on the amount that's collected? Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Next item on the agenda is renewal mm -hmm. of medical and dental insurance coverage uh, for period of March 12 to February 13. Mr. Pardon. Mr. Chairman, I would ask uh, Nancy Grasso, our uh, consultant for uh, benefits to uh, address this topic, please. All right. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, board members, and staff. Um, I'd like to just talk to you briefly about the uh, renewal for the health insurance and dental insurance for the county and its employees. Um, the insurance runs from March 1st through February 28th, so it'll, um, this year 29th, it'll run through the end of February, and then it will renew. Um, the contract ends February 28th this year and will renew at a 16% increase. And I think there's a, a handout in your packet. Um, the 16%, as we went back to Anthem to see if we could um, renegotiate a little bit, see if they can come down on that, we looked and there's some significant health history this year that we foresee is going to happen again next year, causing the increase in your medical premiums. So with that, we went to the marketplace to see if we could find some competitive bids. So we went through the procurement process and acquired some bids from several other health insurance carriers and Anthem for some alternate products and some alternate funding arrangements from all of those. So they should be in your packets. Um, we actually made a re recommendation to stay with Anthem but go in a, toward a self-funded model as opposed to moving to some of the other carriers. Um, and there's a variety of things that we look at and reasons for that. The things that we typically will look at are uh, network penetration in your area. 
We look to see if everybody who's on the plans, if their physicians have a, have a good cross match. So we wouldn't ask too many of your employees to have to change their doctors in order to seek care. Um, so that's one of the issues. Of course, cost is a huge issue. And um, administration, claims paying ability, all of those things come into play. So we actually decided that when, when we looked at this, when we spent quite many, many hours flying, you know, going through the numbers to determine what we should do. And our recommendation ended up being to go with the Anthem self-funded model. Um, although it isn't the cheapest option that's out there, we believe that um, the way that the self-funded model works, it actually could end up being the best financial model. It'll give us some early on cash flow and then will also help us to uh, maintain as close to budget as possible. It's really the best way for us to get to, get to neutral budget. OK. And that recommendation is a 13 percent in, 5 to 13 percent increase. That is in correct. Current, and between a 90 and a $238,000 increase in current. Correct. The 90 is not a hard, fast number. It's just kind of a guess on where we think your claims might fall. And then the, the, the top end number is the maximum. It's the ceiling, which is less than what your renewal was. Questions? Mr. Black? None. Mr. Taylor? Mr. Underwood? Um, Mr. Seeley? You have a couple of questions. Go ahead. Sure. <clears throat> Under the self-renewal, do we then monthly contribute to a fund that then keeps our spending level or are we going to are we going to handle those case by case no the way that it works is it's almost like you it, it looks very similar to a premium that you pay today but it kind of goes into a monthly bucket and you'll pay it out with every month and it looks just like premium um, so if you're overpaying on a monthly basis at the end of the contract you'll actually get a refund of money so you'll start to develop a bucket of money pretty early on because you're going to put money into the, the claims paying bucket, but you won't have a lot of money coming out in the first few months. So you'll kind of get some cash flow going, and then that, for the duration of the contract, you'll eat away at that, at that money. You'll con continue to contribute to the bucket, but you'll also spend down that money. The goal is really to be neutral. That's what we're trying to do. But right, and I was just, so it is a month, it, we will do a monthly contribution to a fund to cover this. That I is guess, correct. So it's not like we're going to get a bill one day for $94,000 for some reason that we're not expecting. Correct. I guess that's what I'm looking for is, is, the, is the monthly cost. Yeah, what we've done is we bought some insurance that will, um, some reinsurance that will cap your monthly cost, your annual cost, and a per person cost. So there are some fixed numbers that you can spend in a month and we can't you know, the insurance company can't ask you for anything more than that. So, yes, you will have a monthly budgeted amount that you could pull out. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Thomas. Thank you, sir. Ms. Grass, so good to see you. Thank How you. How are you today? The, explain to me the self-funded model. That's because in my head when you say self-funded, that makes me think the county's got money. As Mr. Seeley was saying, we put money in a the bucket. Then I file my insurance claim, and I suck all that money out of the bucket, and there's none for the next person. So... Self-funded model doesn't mean the county's actually paying the claims. It means something different. No, it does. It does that. We have, we're on a partial self-funded model. Mm -hmm. So what we actually do is we buy reinsurance on each person. So, for example, if I'll try to make this simple, but if all of you were my employees and each of you put we put money representing premium for each of you into this bucket, but one of you had you know a, a catastrophic claim, we bought insurance so that each of you could only take a certain amount out of the bucket. So, for example, if every month during the year, each of you put in 10000 it looked like premium, right? So every employee is worth 10000 a year. And you, Miss, I'm sorry, you have a, you know, an $80,000 claim. We might say, well, that bucket is capped for her at, at, at 10000 So we can't take any more out of that bucket for her claims, whether it's 80 a million, or $10 million. That bucket can only see $10,000 of her claims. We buy that insurance so that each person... The book gets protected against each person or aggregately. So no one claim can empty your bucket. Does that make sense? I'm just slow, but, but no, it's okay. It's the okay. reality is we're buying insurance for, the for big our claims. insurance. Correct. 
what you're going to do is... I um, hate that industry. I know. I know. Me too. <laughs> I mean, but we have to buy insurance at an extra cost to cover our regular insurance that we buy. That's the bottom line, right? No. We're I'm not buying another insurance? Well, you're buying different insurance. You're not buying additional insurance. You're buying different insurance. So that what they won't pay for the claim on when we have it anyhow. I'm sorry? Sorry, that was a personal thing. Um, they don't always pay for claims. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say that. But okay. um, basically, what's going to happen is, is all of the very small claims get paid by the county in this money that we pay in. Any of the very large claims that we wouldn't want to insure because we could put us at risk. So we don't want to be at risk at all. So what we do is we buy insurance to cover that risk. But any of the ongoing smaller claims that the county will fund out of this out of this bucket. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Mrs. Hatcher. Over the past couple of years, do you have any idea as to what total we have paid in premiums as far as the county is concerned, as well as employees as well? Do you know how much we've paid uh, Anthem Blue Cross and Blue Shield? For the last year or the last couple of years? The, the current year is about $1.7 million. Okay. Do we have any idea what the claims that they've paid out in connection to our employees? Do they, do they give you a report saying how much, what is that number? Um, last year we spent about $1.5 million of the $1.7 on actual claims related charges. The rest of the money was paid to administrative costs. So what we're hoping is if we could keep that number down, we wouldn't have to take or less or keep it the same. We won't actually have to see that 16% increase. Okay. Okay. Uh, and also I see in the packet here that we're talking about that there are three large claims exceeding $25,000. That's this, or six, I believe, six large claims exceeding $25,000 that's still out there. That's correct. And we know of three more. Okay. So that comes out of this insurance that we have purchased to protect uh, the bucket that we're going to establish. That's correct. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank both of you. Appreciate it. Our dental as well. Dental. Dental. Sorry. Is it I? Uh, They're switching carriers. Um, the dental insurance, we actually decided not to switch carriers um, because we tried to do that last year. We have an issue in the county. Uh, and, the, and the surrounding counties where the population of our folks are, are uh, residing in finding um, uh, an appropriate list of dentists. So when we tried to move for costs last year, we had an abundance of, of folks whose claims were not getting paid because they were seeking care from dentists that were outside of the network. Um, so when we tried to look to see you know, where the good opportunities were, um, we, we decided to stay with Anthem again. Um, because they do have the largest network uh, of uh, dentists. Okay. One more question. Uh, how does what we're going to, as well as what we have, impact our employees with uh, Mary Washington Hospital? Because I know there's been a lot of discussion recently about Mary Washington not participating in Anthem uh, insurance. So does what we are planning to go to with this self-insurance, if you will, to a certain amount, does that in impact or affect? Uh, yeah, we've actually made a slight modification to the product uh, that we're offering to everybody so that they can have um, access to Mary Washington um, Hospital as a whole, not just the emergency room. Um, and um, it'll all be repriced. It'll also give everybody the ability to go out of the network from any kind of medical care, but it does give a specific contract into Mary Washington through Anthem. That's included in the cost, in the it additional is. cost? It is, sir. Okay. Any other questions? Was, was there any justification for the cost increase? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Was there any justification for the cost increase? Yeah, I, yeah, I, I believe so. Um, when you look at the claims that have been incurred, and so if you're paying in $1.7 million as a total, but they're paying out one point five in excess of $1.5 um, the rest of those dollars are really to, you know, pay for overhead. It, there's not a ton of profit built into that. Uh, knowing that those claims are going to exist next year, in addition, we have a few more. Um, in, in addition to that, 
I, I think that it is a justified renewal. Like I said, we tried just because we know that the county is struggling financially from a budgetary standpoint to be able to, to absorb that kind of an increase. We went back and asked them for some um, additional discounts, and they just were not willing to do it um, based on their underwriting practices. So uh, typically if there, if there is some leverage in there that we can have, I, I can usually get us a few points, and we've done it you know, consistently since we've been here. But um, this particular year was a tough year because of the medical conditions within the group. Because I think it went up last year without as many claims. Uh, last year it actually went down. Yeah, it was right. down. Mm -hmm. it was the year before it went up. Mm -hmm. Okay, without as many claims. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. I ask Taylor. Question. Sure. So then, uh, if we have an unusually large number of claims mm -hmm. within a particular period, then that impacts the premium? Is that what is, you're saying? That is correct. Okay. So if, if the claims go down, then do the premiums? Adjust downward as well. Mm. <laughs> Seldomly. Seldomly. Usually the, 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 in, the trending increase will, will usually negate mm. negative renewals, but we've managed to get a few, so a few lower renewals. But, you know, if they give you a 16% this year and you get better next year, they're not going to give you back 16. Yeah. The only way to attain that is to self-fund, and that's why we're, we're requesting that we do that. What we're trying to do is... is is make sure that the insurance company, that Anthem in this case, is not getting any more money than what we need to pay our claims. And we're willing to, 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 to take this product in order to do that. Okay. Thank okay. you. Thank you. You're welcome. How does the board wish to... Uh, do we need to vote on this? How does the board wish to uh, dispose of this issue? Is there a motion to accept, accept the recommendation of... Uh, as well as uh, staff? I would so move. Is there a Mr. second Chairman. to Mr. Taylor's motion? Second, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the motion made Mr. Taylor, seconded by Mr. Underwood. Is there a discussion on the motion? All in favor, vote by saying aye. 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 All opposed, nay. And the motion is carried. Thank you. All right, under appointments. Mr. Black, I believe you have an appointment for the Industrial Development Authority. Yes, I do, Mr. Chairman. Um, for the Industrial Development Authority, I would like to appoint Mr. Danny Carter. Okay. Second. Motion made by Mr. Black, seconded by Mr. Thomas, that Danny Carter be appointed to the Industrial Development Authority representing the Western Carolina District. Discussion on that motion. All in favor, vote by saying aye. 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 All opposed, nay. And the motion is carried. Mr. Underwood, uh, you have the uh, Emergency Services Commission appointee. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Um, Ms. Chenault has been our representative until we redistrict, and um, she's now in the Bowling Green District. Oh. I'd like for Ms. Chenault to continue to be the Emergency Services Commission representative. I've talked to Mr. Seeley, and he's agreed, and I've talked to Ms. Chenault, and she would agree to serve. So I'd like to see her to continue to serve. Okay, so now she, her term has not expired. I mean, her, her three, four years. And is, is you still in place or, yeah. So do we have to vote on that again, uh, Mr. Emerson? Okay. She's, she's, she's representing a different district. Right. All she has to be is under camera. Right. Hasn't expired. She's still on the commission. But she can, be, she can represent anywhere in the county you can appoint to, the, okay. to a commission. So it's not by district. I thought it was by district, too. I thought it was by district. And then I thought it was by district and maybe one at large. That's what I thought. Okay. To the Bowling Green District? No, to no, the to Reed, Reed Church. Reed Church Even though she doesn't read, didn't read the church, she didn't. Well, the appointments are by district. If but you would, person just you would to let us, yeah, let us uh, have staff research that to make sure that it is not, uh, they have to be a resident of the district in which they represent and that it's not by district. Uh, Mr. Chenault, we'd love to have you stay on because I know you served as chairman for a number of years and you did an outstanding job. And uh, I understand why Mr. Underwood wants to reappoint you, but we need to make sure that uh, we're legally uh, within, uh, within that grounds. 
All right, we'll put that we'll put that appointment off until the next uh, next board meeting. All right, consent agenda. Is there an item on the consent agenda that you'd like to uh, pull? If not, is there a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented? So moved, Mr. Chairman. Second. <coughs> motion made by Mr. Underwood, seconded by Mr. Taylor. Discussion on the motion. All in favor, vote by saying aye. 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 All opposed, nay. And the motion is carried. We apologize. We're past the 7.30 time frame, but it is now time for public comments. I would ask that you come forward, state your name, your voting district. Three minutes. Uh, I'd ask that uh, staff uh, time. You have three minutes to address the board on any issue that's not in the public hearing, and I don't know that we have any public hearings tonight. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. My name is David Best. I live in the uh, Port Royal District, and I'm here to talk to the bo uh, Board of Supervisors regarding the proposed ordinance for fireworks. A couple of three comments I'd like to make. Uh, first is it does not sufficiently address the types of fireworks that we're talking about. There's, most people think when they think fireworks, they think about the things that the, com the consumer fireworks that they sell at, that you buy at the roadside park or roadside uh, uh, sales uh, point or at, at Walmart. The, what we're talking about and what they should, they should designate in that ordinance, the difference between that and the display fireworks, those large uh, dis uh, fireworks that, cause, that need to be uh, launched out of mortars and shot 80, 90 feet in the air. Uh, that doesn't seem to fit into the ordinance. It is not mentioned in there. The other aspect that needs to be changed or at least be looked at uh, seriously is the approval process. Currently, the zone, the ordinance requires the county administrator to approve all permits for fireworks. This has been watered down in the new version where only the fire chief, head of the MS, can approve those fireworks. Now, what I call the point is the problem that we're having is because there was no oversight in that current process. So the fire chief was making decisions and his staff was making decisions without going through the county administrator to issue permits. And that, so that needs to be tightened and looked at in some degree. Third point would be permits. Just I know when I go to do any kind of construction, I get a permit from the county, I have to pay a big fee. I have to, you know, and that covers the cost of the county employees coming out and all the administrative costs. For some reason, there's not a, when you talk about a permit for fireworks, and all the county work that goes into that and all the work that the county employees have to do to go out and check over the area, there's no cost for these permits. And I would advise the board to insist that there be some kind of a significant cost for those permits. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to address the board on any issue? My name is Melissa Lewis. I'm from the Bowling Green Voting District. I had planned originally to get up here tonight and um, thank you, Mr. Chairman and gentlemen of the board, for putting our children first and working with the school board to build a school that our community can be proud of and parents can feel safe sending their children to. I had not planned on standing up here fuming, my head reeling. I'm confounded by the discussion that took place at the preceding joint meeting. How can anyone blame raising the raising of taxes on the schools? That is absolutely ridiculous. Let's be honest. This county is in debt up to its eyeballs because of its history of poor budgeting and mismanagement of funds. An extra 300000 would have given our children a finished and complete facility. The cost of finishing this school the right way the first time is less than that of the interest borrowed, of the inter interest incurred on money borrowed for other recent projects, projects that were much less scrutinized by the board. I am well aware of the fact that under Robert's rule, you, Mr. Akers, Mr. Thomas, Mr. Underwood, and Mr. Taylor have the ability to bring a revote on this issue either later tonight or at any public meeting on or before February 14th. We are also aware of the $1.5 million surplus from the 2010-2011 fiscal year that currently sits in the county's general fund. 
We ask that you take a mere 20% of this and use it to complete the Bowling Green project. Please re-vote in favor of the full budget that the school board needs, keeping in mind that it was not our children's education that placed this huge debt on the taxpayers' shoulders. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Lewis. Linda Keith, Bowling Green. I've been up here many, many times. I am sick to my stomach. I come into this meeting late because I am taking care of my children who are here because your open public comments are supposed to be at 7.30. Now they're going to be on to bed late because you chose to continue your meeting as long as you decided to do so. You know what? Pardon my French, but screw the school. When you want another school in another side of the county, I won't be even here to offer any kind of help. I will not support a damn thing. And when you want to be reelected, I'll be damn sure I'm going to every single one of your places and telling you, you're not going to get reelected. I don't care who you think you are. The children of this community deserve a whole lot more than what you're offering them right now. I cannot believe that you can't, oh, you can't come to terms to Ms. one point, Ms. to Ms. ten point eight. If you cannot control your emotions and control your voice, I'm going to, ask, I have to ask you to sit down. I will not allow you to stand up there and shout at the members of this board uh, with what you're saying. You have been here many, many times. You've threatened each one of us many, many times with re-election. You know, and you know that what? doesn't make any difference to me. I'm not you know what? depending on you, it. So, so it really doesn't make any difference. Because and you know what? It doesn't matter. What you think and what you want me to say and what you want me to do are absolutely not. It because you're going to do what you want to do. Ms. Heath, have a seat. No. I'm have not going to have a seat. This is a public, call, call the public sheriff, room. Call the I don't office. need to have a seat. Sheriff, I want to have a seat. Let me just say this. No, no, no. Well, you, that's you, fine. You, 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 why don't you welcome? I was willing to give you an opportunity. But I will not be yelled at, and the rest of the board won't be yelled at. All right. Anyone else would like to address the board on any issue? Linnea Woolridge, Bowling Green. Um, I think that now, I guess, is an appropriate time to express my disappointment in the members of the board who voted aye to putting a $10.5 million cap on school funding, which shorts the school project by what I consider a mere $300,000. To see an extra penny on my taxes will not keep me awake at night, and I'm not saying that that is true of everyone. However, anyone in this county who has bought a marked up can of soda at a gas station would probably not notice that penny. We asked you to take care of our children. We asked you, I personally even begged you, and I don't know that it necessarily spoke well to you. But we needed you. We still need you. My lack of faith in the board has been deeply compounded tonight. The misappropriation of funds that has gone on in this county in the past can no longer go unnoticed by this taxpayer. I... I can't see this mission through to an end and then quiet down and leave you in peace to continue to make choices that may be unwise with my taxes or the debt that my taxes pay into. I will continue to attend Board of Supervisor meetings, everyone that I can, and when I cannot, someone must go in my place. I do not believe that you speak for, our, for your districts when our children are made to play the fool. Thank you to Mr. Seeley and Mr. Black for seeing reason tonight. I hope that some other member has the good reason to ask for a revote and that a decision is made to do what is right. I think that is what any parent would hope. Our hopes have been dashed before in this very room. I have been up here before, you know, speaking of expectations, of trust, even of miracles naming board members and requesting a sense of personal accountability from each of you. But the board at this time does not seem to want to make this happen. Collectively, by choosing 
not to spend an extra $300,000. You're cheating our children over a penny. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Wood. Is there anyone else who would like to address the board on any issue? My name is Kay Watson. I live in the Port Royal District. And I just want to say I like fireworks. I don't want the county ordinance changed. I can't understand why the board decided to change the ordinance with three, now four people out of 28,000 people complain. I guess it's, the old adage is correct. Squeaky wheel gets the grease. Thank you, Ms. Watson. Anyone else? Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, uh, Mr. Barton. Uh, I'm going to change the subject a little bit. Uh, and talk Frank G., right? From Frank G., Bowling Green, Bowling Green District. Thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry. No I'm going to change the subject a little bit and talk to you about uh, an article I read in Carolina Progress that Mr. Ms. Barton was quoted. And excuse me if I quoted you incorrectly, because the quote was that of the surplus of $1.5 million from fiscal year 2010-2011, that that surplus was intended to go to the utility fund to cover deficit. And I think I heard the treasurer talk, in the, uh, talk about that also today. Uh, you need, from a policy standpoint, to start making your utility fund self-sufficient. You should not be using general funds to cover deficits in the utility fund itself. Make the users of the utilities cover those costs and not the rest of the county. So I'd urge you in your budgeting process and your budgeting sessions to look at increasing your user fees for water and sewer to those users and make that fund self-sufficient. And that way you also free up that $1.5 million to be used for other things, such as adding $300,000 of it to cover the deficit I just heard about in the school system. So I thank you for considering that from a policy standpoint. And that should be a policy you all really work at in your, in your budget sessions this year. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Mr. G. Appreciate your comments. Uh, Tammy Best, Port Royal. And if this is about the fireworks, I just want to let you guys know that those are four to six inch mortars that are being shot off less than 1,000 feet from my house. I like fireworks too, but not when they're in my backyard and endangering my property. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Best. Yes, sir. My name is uh, Bill Riley, uh, Western Caroline District. Um, I'm here representing the Humane Society of Caroline County. I've been elected the Vice President. I'd like to address the, uh, just read a brief statement from Caroline County Humane Society on the fireworks issue. The Humane Society of Caroline County actively strives to represent the welfare of domestic animals and is deeply concerned about the county's stance permitting the use and abuse of professional grade fireworks in our community. It stands a reason that one person's rights should end when they impose on another's well-being, as is evident in this case. Clear, clearly there are many negative factors. Harm done to horses, belonging to others. Harm done to outdoor pets, belonging to others. Harm done to wildlife, including birds in the surrounding area. The potential harm done to the forestry, private and public property, even a risk of human injury or even death. The potential risk to the firefighting personnel that have to come if there's an issue. The expense that you incur during that. Um, Main Society of Caroline County would like to publicly appeal to the court of County Board of Supervisors to re-examine the issue and to not underestimate the dangerous impact that the use of and abuse of professional grade fireworks it has upon animals. Although animals cannot speak for themselves, they nonetheless deserve and to be valued and treated humanely. Many citizens in Caroline County reside here because they appreciate the enjoy the benefits of the rural setting. The natural surroundings the wildlife, the lifestyle of keeping farm animals and pets in peace and quiet Virginia's countryside. It is the responsibility of the Board of Supervisors to serve 
and preserve the best interests of the community and its citizens. And on a side note, coming from me, moving from a major city up north to beautiful county with beautiful people, and uh, like to see that preserved. I, I would hate to see something happen destroy some of the beautiful surroundings we have here. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Riley. Appreciate your comments. Anyone else would like to address the board on any issue? Mr. Mr. Chairman, Mr. board members, my name is Albert Wachtmeister. I live in Port Royal District. This firework uh, issue, I wonder what Buffalo Bill and uh, Anne Oakley would say about it and General Grant and General Lee about all this popping and the horses can't take it. I think that um, we should allow fireworks for New Year's Eve, 4th of July, and everybody's uh, birthday. And uh, that's my opinion. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Buckmaster. Is there anyone else who would like to address the board on any issue? Sharon Carter, Commissioner of the Revenue, just announcements. Ms. Carter, it's good to see you. Personal property forms are due February 1. <coughs> February is Elderly Relief Month. If you wish to have one of myself or someone from the office come to your district, please notify us of the time and place and we will be there. Business license are due March 1. We will also on February the 8th have DMV to go located at the county administration building where people can have their driver's license renewed, pictures, or other things that our DMV select does not do. This is important to let people know because we already are finding out a lot of our senior citizens need the service. We want to see if it is used so we can invite them back at least on a quarterly basis. So I have a sheet for you to remind your churches and everything in your districts to please use this service so we can get it back. Good. Thank you, Ms. Carter. Ms. Carter? Yes, uh, Ms. Carter, before you go, I, I just asked Mr. Parton to make sure we have all of those things on the county website that you just mentioned. So if they you are can... there? Okay, and, it, and I'm sure they're on the Commissioner, Web, uh, Commissioner of Revenues area, but maybe we need a pointer from the main to that. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. My name is Catherine Laughlin, and I reside in the Port Royal District. Thank you for the opportunity to address the board. My comments tonight continue to address the subject of permits issued by the county for the display of professional fireworks. Foremost, we want to express tremendous appreciation on the efforts put forth by the board and by other members who serve this county to amend the Caroline County Fireworks Ordinance and provide additional restrictions on the issuance of permits for the display of professional fireworks. I have had the opportunity to peruse the ordinance recently posted online to repeal and replace Chapter 50 Fireworks of the Caroline County Code to prohibit non-exempt fireworks and to require permitting by the fire official that will be read to you here shortly by Chief Garnett. All of these efforts are noted and appreciated, but, and this is a big but, these do not address the fundamental problem that the county continues to issue permits for the public display of professional fireworks in our neighborhood. I, along with many other concerned citizens of this county, am trying to understand and have concerns as to why the county 
is not enforcing already existing ordinances. I live in a district that is zoned agricultural preservation and which has also been identified as resource sensitive overlay. The regulations for this district are designed to accommodate related activities, but only to the extent that these activities serve agricultural, forestal, or similar rural economic functions. This district, agricultural preservation, provides for the orderly development of such uses in appropriate areas to reduce the conflicts inherent with incompatible uses. How can officials in this county deem professional fireworks displays or the storage of 8,600 pounds of fireworks compatible with the agricultural activities for which this district was created? Professional fireworks displays are not compatible with agricultural, forestal, raising and pasturing of animals, or similar economic functions. With Article 5 in place, the county has sound basis to prohibit the issuance of the professional fireblick displays within this district. The county has the ability to not issue professional display firework permits. The county has the authority to remedy the problem created to adjacent owners, just based on the ordinance. These are owners who have a right to the quiet enjoyment of their properties and a right to the use of the land for which this district was created. Ms. Lofton, I have to ask you to Stop. summarize, please. Uh, if you have... I am truly perplexed as to why the county is not enforcing existing ordinances, the fireworks ordinance itself, and the applicable provisions of the land use ordinance, particularly those pertaining to special events. Thank and I thank you very much. Thank you. Good Appreciate night. your comments. Anyone else would like to address the board? Susan Jackson, I'm from the Western Caroline District. I'm here also to talk about the fireworks. This just came to my attention in the past 24 hours. Um, I'm not always here in the county, but I felt like I wanted to address this because this is something that's personal to me, and I feel like there are some things that aren't being considered by this board. Um, I do thank you for looking at this issue. I hope that you will continue to look at this issue and I would hope that you would keep an open mind with this issue. Some of, the, some of you in your personal lives may not have had any contact with some of the concerns that have brought him here tonight or will, that I will bring uh, concern for animals. Um, but keep your mind open. I wanted to let you know, if anybody had done any history about fireworks, it started in 200 B.C. It started in China. The first thing that they did... Um, were green chunks of bamboo that exploded. When they found out that the fireworks scared people and animals, they decided to use the fireworks because they thought it would scare away evil spirits. Remember the word scare. The Italians brought them back to Italy. They were the ones that actually invented the ones that are aerial shells. They came to America in about 1600, and they were used to celebrate special occasions also to impress and to scare the Indians. Thinking about these original uses of fireworks here. Today the display of fireworks, we generally have them that they instill a patriotic sense in us, a hope of patriotism, and we use them in celebration. Advances in chemistry have enabled pyrotechnicians to use a lot of the different chemicals now, potassium, chlorate, nitrates, barium, magnesium, aluminum, and they all create the different colors today, but they're still chemicals that are regulated. In recent years, the debate of fireworks in Virginia has grown. Certain counties and cities have banned them. They've made ordinance against them. It's not unusual that Caroline County would consider doing the same. In fact, some of you may note the state of Hawaii in December just outlawed fireworks because of health risks. 
and for safety reasons. People that are for the control of fireworks generally state that they are concerned for their safety, their property losses, their liability, 